Welcome to the Anglican Diocese of Melbourne uh, Communion Service for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Uh, as in past weeks, we're filming at St. David's Moorabbin, and today Bishop Kate Proud is leading and presiding the service. Welcome. We hope that you can make this your own church service at home, wherever you are, and participate as much as possible. Uh, we're going to begin by singing, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen, alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed, indeed. Alleluia. alleluia. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the hymn of praise together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter. 
God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading for this morning is taken from the Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, beginning from verse 42. They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the Apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Hear the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. <clears throat> Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babes, crave pure mute spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. For the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome again, and we're continuing our sermon series from the letter of Peter, first letter of Peter in this Easter season. And uh, that's the uh, epistle reading for six weeks. This is the third. And they seem to be very relevant words for us, I think, in this time of uh, lockdown and social isolation. Well, let's pray. Our God and Father, speak to us from your word which is light and life. Shine its light in our hearts, we pray, so that we may live for the sake of the risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, church is closed. Church is cancelled. Church is not open. Uh, all those signs you may have seen uh, over these last six or seven weeks or so. Well, certainly, though, the buildings are closed. But I'm not sure that it's right to say church is closed or that church is cancelled even or that church is not open. Yes, the buildings are closed and, yes, we are socially isolated. We're unable to gather together in our church buildings. We're unable to receive the Lord's Supper together or the Eucharist. But what does it mean to be church in lockdown, church in social isolation? What does it mean to be church where we cannot gather and cannot be in our church buildings? And I think this famous passage from 1 Peter chapter 2, building on what we've seen the last two weeks as well, helps us think again about some of the essentials, really, of being church both in our identity as well as in our function. The passage I'm looking at begins from verse 4, and it begins with the word come. It could be statement, as you come to him, or in some translations, a command, come to him. It's certainly an invitation to come, but not come into the building. It's not saying to your neighbor, come to church with me on Sunday into a building, but rather the invitation is to come to a living stone. Now, stones don't live. Peter pushes the boundaries of the metaphor, as so often the Bible does, really, because no metaphor fully works for the truths of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. A living stone. Stones don't live, but Jesus, remember, from the very first part of this letter, from the beginning of chapter 1, has, through his resurrection, given us new birth into a living hope. This theme of living runs through 1 Peter and is a very helpful and encouragement to us as we're faced with so much threat of death and real death in our world these days. Come to him, the living stone, not come to it. Jesus is the living stone. He's not just a dead stone, but living for us because of the resurrection. 
church, you see, is a resurrection entity, a resurrection being, I guess, or organism. We gather together as living stones, as Peter goes on to say in verse 5, to the living stone, the risen Lord Jesus. Church is about the resurrection body of Christ of which we are part and we're built into him as living stones. You also, like living stones, build yourselves into a spiritual house. The idea of a spiritual house it would echo for Jewish readers the Old Testament temple of Jerusalem. That was the spiritual house in which in the Holy of Holies, symbolically at least, but some reality dwelt God himself, not limited to it, but in a special way dwelling in that Holy of Holies. But now that model, that Old Testament model has changed. No longer is it gather together for sacrificial worship in the temple of Jerusalem, but rather come to Jesus, the spiritual house. We're built into him because he's alive and we live in and through him. We are built into him to be the spiritual house for the dwelling of God on earth, basically. To be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices. Again, the metaphors get a little bit mixed and the boundaries are pushed. There's a sense in which we are part of the building, the spiritual house, the temple, but we're also the priesthood that operates within the temple, offering spiritual sacrifices, which we'll come back to in a minute. You see, the identity of us as church is not grounded in the building of bricks or stone which we go to normally on a Sunday, wherever across the Diocese of Melbourne or even beyond that may be. Our identity is that we're built together as a spiritual house in and with and belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Jesus Christ. To him we come, fundamentally. So that even on a Sunday when our churches may be open again, coming to our church buildings is not the fundamental thing, but rather, first and foremost, come to Jesus. Remember, as Peter addressed the Christians as he began this letter at the beginning of chapter 1, he called them the exiles, those of the dispersion, scattered around the world as indeed Christians are these days. And the idea here is of Christians, not just one known community coming as living stones, but actually of Christians in all the different parts of Turkey that he was writing to, and beyond that as we read this letter, so that the church is a global church, a universal church, and that we with our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether that's in the UK or in South Sudan, or whether it's in, the, in Myanmar or in China, or wherever it might be, we together are being built on the foundation of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about simply the local neighborhood church, and it's certainly not about the building primarily. Well, I think these words about our identity are really encouraging for us in a lockdown period. The lack of buildings, the lack of gathering together on a Sunday does not mean the lack of church. We are the church. Uh, but notice too that it's not me individually. Build yourselves together into a spiritual house. That is, if we're Christians belonging to the risen Lord Jesus Christ, fundamentally we belong together. Uh, and that's part of the pain, I think, of the lockdown that we can't gather physically together. But nonetheless, we belong together still, and we are still church wherever we may be. I think a danger of the lockdown is our individualism will come to the fore, where the lack of community gets brushed to the side, and it becomes about me watching a video, and it's about me individually. And a great danger, I fear, is that we'll lose that belonging community of being living stones built together on the risen Lord Jesus Christ. But nonetheless, the encouragement is the buildings in which we gather are not essential. The risen Lord Jesus is our foundation, our capstone, cornerstone. Uh, he's the reason that we belong together. And so therefore, a hope in this lockdown 
will be that we come back to our foundation. We come back to our cause of identity is Jesus and not St. Swithin's or St. Mary's or whatever church building we may go to or belong to week by week. It's Jesus, the risen Jesus, who matters foremostly. Well, our identity then is not threatened by a COVID virus. Our identity as church is not undermined by isolation. Our foundation is the risen Christ. But from this identity flows our function. Peter puts it in two ways in this passage. In verse 5, as living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That's the first way he puts the function of the church in this passage. That is, a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices. The idea of priesthood is simply mediation, to mediate God to others, in this case, a world, basically. And we do that through spiritual sacrifices. That's not described here, what those are. They, they will come, actually, we'll see next week, I think. I think the spiritual sacrifices Peter is alluding to here at this point is about our, our godly, holy living as exiles scattered around the world. That is, our lives are our sacrifice to God to be seen by the world, the way we show our love and our compassion, for example, the way we care for each other and care for the vulnerable, the poor, the needy uh, in our world. The Jerusalem temple was the location for animal sacrifices by Levitical priests. But we're part of a spiritual house that is global, that is living, grounded in the risen Jesus. And the way we live our life scattered as exiles dispersed through this world is the way that we mediate as a royal priesthood, God to our world. Honorable lives, Peter will call it in the next paragraph, as exiles in the world. But it's not just our actions. Because Peter also says in verse 9, when he comes back to the theme of identity flowing into function, he says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, summing up in a way what he's already said, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Here is word, here is declaration, proclamation. Here is speaking of the praises of God or Another translation puts it, the mighty acts of God who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Darkness into light is an echo of the creation story. And here, of course, tied into the resurrection of Jesus, I think is alluding to the new creation that comes through the resurrection of Jesus. The mighty acts of God, the praises of God, the pinnacle of that, of course, is the resurrection. It's through the resurrection we have a living hope. So Christians, the church, us, we're to be the proclaimers, speakers of the resurrection of Jesus, the new life, the living hope that is ours and could be the world's through Jesus Christ. Put those two things together back in verse 5, the spiritual sacrifices of holy living, and here the proclamation of the mighty acts of God. And bringing them together, we have word and deed. It's not one or the other. It's not merely words not backed up by deeds, and it's not deeds that are empty of words. That is, our holy life as a sacrifice, uh, in association with our proclamation of the great and mighty deeds or praises of God, is our role, our function as church to the world. Our primary function as it's described in the New Testament, and here including, is not fundamentally for each other, but actually to be the mediation of God to our world. Now, as we no longer can gather physically, we should not think that our function has stopped or is put into suspension. Our function of living in our world as a, as a spiritual sacrifice our function of being a priesthood to the world, 
of proclaiming the mighty acts of God to the world is needed now more than ever. Certainly, by way of love and compassion, there are many people in physical need, financial need, and great needs through their fear, anxiety, and sense of hopelessness. We have a great role and function for our world in that case. But at the same time, in a world that is despairing and often hopeless, we have the role of proclaiming the mighty acts, the praises of God, especially the resurrection that brings a living hope through Jesus Christ. We have an astonishing privilege, brothers and sisters, that even though we cannot gather together week by week, we nonetheless are God's chosen ones, his own people, a living stones, a royal priesthood, great statements and words of privilege, of identity. But at the same time, that identity brings the responsibility to be people of spiritual sacrifice for our world, to proclaim his praises and his mighty acts. And maybe now more than ever, our world needs us and needs the living hope of the resurrection of Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, stir us from your word, we pray, your eternal living word, that we may offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you through Jesus, and that we may faithfully proclaim your mighty acts, your praises to this world, so that they may come to have the same living hope through the living stone, the risen Jesus. Amen. So let us together affirm the faith of the church as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. We pray for the nations of the world, especially, Lord, as the whole world wrestles together to find a cure, a vaccine for this current pandemic. We pray for wisdom for the leaders of the nations of the world. Guide with wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live and in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give the people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, compassion, and fairness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the church. We pray for the worldwide church. Lord, even as we reach out to the people of the church through different means, through electronic communications, through videos and Zoom. We ask and pray, Lord, that your Spirit's work 
will remain constant. We pray, Lord, for the ministry of the churches that take different forms at this time. We pray for our own diocese, for our archbishop, our bishops, our clergy, and all lay people. Send out the light and truth of your gospel and bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks and pray for those who are in need. Particularly, we want to remember those who have lost their jobs, those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic. We want to pray for those who are feeling ill as they wrestle with life being at home. We also pray for those who care for those who are in need. We want to remember the doctors and nurses who are laying their lives down to serve others. We commend to your fatherly care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, discouragement, or any other trouble. Give them patience and a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who, are, who care for them and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks and pray for those who have gone before us. This week, we want to remember John Airy from St. David's. We praise you for all your servants whose lives have honored Christ. Encourage us by their example so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us and share with them the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear us, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven people, and we come now to share the peace, um, I encourage you, as Bishop Paul has been doing in these previous weeks, um, that you may wish to pause uh, the video and um, contact somebody you know, either by phone or by text, and say, peace be with them, and share God's love. And so we are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son. And bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.
break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share. isolation and separation right now, we come together as we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, our risen Saviour. And so I invite you to reflect on these words. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory.
God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.